Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society, and I'm joined today by another past president of the North American Menopause Society, Dr. Joanne Manson. Dr. Joanne, can you tell us where you work and what you do? Hi, it's great to be here. I'm a chief of the Division of Preventive Medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital, professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, and I'm an endocrinologist. So for all of us, as we get older, we want to live as long as we can, but I think for most of us, living well and living independently is really what's so important. And I think what was so important to me looking at your study was that it really speaks to, do we have control over these elements of longevity and quality of life? So tell us who you studied. We studied more than 135,000 adults in the United Kingdom, a study called the UK Biobank. And we looked at lifestyle behaviors, such as not smoking, having regular physical activity, healthy diet, healthy weight, healthy sleep, sleeping seven to nine hours a night, also having a good blood pressure, blood cholesterol level, and um, blood glucose level. And we related all of these factors to health outcomes. The these outcome that we were most interested in was life expectancy that would be free of chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, or dementia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that all of these are so important because really they do impact your ability to live independently. So. What was found? Was there a relationship between these eight and the outcome you were looking at? Overall, in the overall cohort with a mean age of 50, the men had a mean a future life expectancy free of chronic disease of 25 years and the women 30 more years. But according to whether or not they had these healthy lifestyle practices and, and risk factor status, the, the men who had good um, status lived an extra seven years free of chronic disease, and the women lived an average of 9.5 years free of chronic disease compared to those who scored poorly on this metric. So it was strongly suggestive that uh, we can take charge of our life through these lifestyle factors, healthy lifestyle behaviors, and extend our life expectancy free of chronic disease, what we call our health, our health span, our healthy years ahead. So when we look at the men and we say, when you do the math and say it's about 75, and then are we adding on the additional years that you examined? We, we're, we're saying that Hmm. Overall, there's an additional 25 years on average, but there's this difference. It's not added on to the 25 years. Right. It's uh, within that period. It, it's those who have the uh, healthy lifestyle practices live more than an extra 25 years in men, and those who have healthy lifestyle practices live more than the 30 additional years in women free of chronic disease. So it, it, it's not directly added to the average, but they're, they're all in a range. And those who have the healthier lifestyle practices have the longer life free of chronic disease. Now, were there any additional factors that could modify this? We often think about, you know, socioeconomic did we go to school and you know attain a certain level of education, the neighborhoods that we live in? These are often called the so-called social determinants of health. Did that modify whether or not it impacted if you had a, still a high score? Did you do as well? We thought it was intriguing that people who did better in terms of these lifestyle behaviors had a longer lifespan free of chronic disease, whether or not they had low educational level, low income, or lower socioeconomic status. So the gain in health span, years of life free of these chronic diseases was similar across all the socioeconomic groups. Irres That's so interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we thought that that was very interesting and a very positive message for the public in terms of being able to take charge of your health through these lifestyle uh, behaviors will, in fact, extend 
the, the years free of chronic disease. But we also understand that sometimes it can be more challenging to be regularly physically active or have a healthy diet um, if it's not as accessible or affordable for some groups. So it's such a powerful message, I think, for all of us to listen to that when we think about chronic diseases, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, certainly dementia, these are very concerning for all of us that this is something that we want to avoid. And it sounds like this is attainable. This is something that most of us, if we're aware of what we can do, if we do it, it then translates into a measurable outcome for all of us. Exactly. It appears from the study that if we're able to achieve these lifestyle behaviors to have, to be physically active and to do these things, we will extend our health span, our years of life free of chronic diseases across all groups, irrespective of education or income. And I think for all of us listening, um, women, men, any of us as utilizers of the healthcare system, that all of us not only wanna live long, but more importantly, we wanna live well and independently. And this is something that we can all listen to in terms of messaging and incrementally improve each of these eight markers, whether they be lifestyle or behavior. Absolutely. I, I think it, it's a really important message that what we do in terms of lifestyle factors and control of risk factors will really make a difference in terms of life expectancy and health, um, particularly in terms of lifespan free of these chronic diseases. And we can even compress the period of time when we're living with these chronic diseases, which as you say, is not as high a quality of life and is not as desirable as additional years of life free of these chronic diseases. Well, thank you so much for joining us and something that we need to think about and now put into action. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here.